All right, gang, today we're going to talk about, as promised, uh, the godfather of powerlifting, which was Ernie France. Unfortunately, Ernie left us about two years ago. He was 86. Um, and a lot of this is gleaned from an article from Ron Fernando, which happened to be in the same 2010 powerlifting magazine as the one about John Cole that uh, I recently shared some of. Um, so Ernie was not much into school as a youngster, but after serving Uncle Sam in Korea, he went to school for law enforcement and actually became a police officer for about five years. And he was always more into helping people better themselves than in making a buck. He also um, worked in construction for a while and it occurred to him, you know, working in construction and carrying around heavy eye beams and doing heavy stuff like that on a daily basis, that the human body was capable of a lot of work. And that kind of formed the basis of his later training philosophy. Um, and he liked to help people so much that, he, in fact, he went out of pocket, like, to help lifters travel to meets and, and get lifters the equipment they need and things like that never thought twice about it um he also worked with an organization for youngsters that were obese which was called credo and it was formed to help obese youngsters through exercise and not just powerlifting but other exercise he was actually quite into uh calisthenics and he did a lot of um uh, push-ups, uh, chin-ups, sit-ups, and all that kind of stuff be, before he got into serious weight training and suggest that for beginners as a starting place. Uh, he also ended up taking a job as a coach for young men in the penal system and then later with adults in several different penal systems. Uh, and he was teaching them powerlifting, and he coached several really good prison lifting teams which he describes in his book, The Ten Commandments of Powerlifting. Um, so he started his journey in bodybuilding in the early 60s, and he did well, and he, he placed well, you know, won or um, took body part, best body parts and a lot of stuff like that. Um, he took second place in the Mystery USA in 67, so, you know, that's pretty good. Um, and... He won or placed in a number of shows before and after that. It kind of culminated in 74 with uh, something kind of crazy that he did. He competed in the IPF Worlds in the 181 class, and then on the same day uh, competed uh, like 12 miles away in the Mr. USA contest, which is pretty insane. Now, he took first in the, uh, in the power meet, and then he took at 181 and took second at the physique contest, which, of course, he was disappointed, disappointed not winning, but that's still pretty dang good. Uh, in 62, or maybe a little before 62, he met his, uh, what turned to be his third wife, Diane, and they stayed together, had a great relationship. Um, and then in 62, he opened up his gym, France Health Studio, Studios in Aurora, Illinois, and that ended up doing pretty well. Uh, and then he figured running meets at his own gym would solve a lot of problems with getting people and equipment to meets. So he started that by starting his own federations, the APF on the national level and the WPC on the world level. He also worked on lifting gear and he came up with his own squat suits and bench shirts and other, and I think maybe wrist wraps. He had his own custom protein powder, and he made other lifting gear, and he developed a successful mail order business around that also. Uh, when you see his routine, which apparently did not change much over the years, even well into his old age, uh, it is clear that Ernie had incredible recuperative powers, squatting and deadlifting as much as three times per week. Uh, though he did compete at a pretty high level in bodybuilding and powerlifting for years, he decided in 84, after placing third in a physique contest that he had trained really hard for, and he thought he was ripped to the bone, um, the third place was a very disappointing finish for him, 
and he decided at this point that it was time to dedicate himself fully to powerlifting. And he even made that one of his Ten Commandments, uh, which I have listed here in the video, but it's just, uh, just a one line uh, for each commandment. He goes into great detail on each of those commandments, as well as into considerable detail about his um, special things that he does for each lift, which, again, I'm going to have kind of summaries of shown here um, in the video where he does uh, partial squats, quarter squats, bottom-up squats, pause squats, negative squats, and he does negatives on all three of the big lifts. Uh, he prefers to do negatives with uh, two or three spotters, which I'm sure he didn't have a problem getting uh, owning his own gym. Um, he had a lot of records as a master. In fact, I'm going to show the open powerlifting. It's kind of an Excel sheet kind of thing. But that's, you can see all the records that he got. And that's just that record, at least what I took out of it, is from his late 50s on and setting all kinds of crazy numbers. Um, he also coached his wife, who turned out to be a really good powerlifter, and several other great lift female lifters, along with a number of great male lifters, including none other than Ed Cohn. He unfortunately left us a couple years ago, as I said, at the age of 86, may he rest in peace. I strongly suggest you pick up his Ten Commandments of Powerlifting, um, which the second edition came out about 10 years ago. And you can find it at Amazon or um, eBay or all these other places that sell books. Um, whereas the original one that he wrote back in 84 is really rare and hard to find. And if you can find it, you're probably going to pay an astronomical price. Um, I'm going to sign out here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll consider subscribing to stay tuned for what's next. Thanks.